Over the past weekend, I was upgrading a PC for my church and it had a decade old system in it. We have this Core 2 Duo E something or another right in here. Batteries are falling out. It's not in good condition. But one of the things that I noticed is that this Intel stock cooler for the Core 2 Duo is quite beefy. But then when you take a look at the stock cooler that Intel is currently including, it's quite minuscule. Things are smaller. Apparently, Intel has decided we don't need as much surface area to actually dissipate the heat on the coolers. Things have gotten more efficient, but it's not like the TDP is all that different between the Core 2 Duo and current CPUs. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test whether or not Intel has just shrunk the size and given us the same amount of performance, or if indeed the extra surface area on a 10 year old CPU cooler, a stock Intel CPU cooler is gonna make any difference. And to do this testing, we're gonna be using the Core i5-8600K on a B360 motherboard. It's not gonna be overclocked. It'll be at like 4.1, 4.2 gigahertz, and we'll be able to actually test that out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and turn the system on. We currently have a aftermarket CPU cooler in here. We have the Gamex GT. We're gonna be doing that for baseline results. Then we're gonna put on this old school stock cooler, and then we're gonna move on to the creme de la creme, 10 year old stock cooler from Intel. And then we'll see, is there any difference? So for testing all of this, we're gonna be monitoring everything in hardware monitor, and we're gonna be testing things with Ida64 Extreme on a stress test, 10 minutes long. And then we're also gonna just be doing a short little run of Cinebench to see what burst temperatures are like, and then A to 64 will give us the long-term temperatures. Again, we're using the Gamax GT Deep Cool CPU cooler. It's nothing special, it just has RGB lighting, so that makes it look pretty. But we're getting average temperatures of around 60 degrees Celsius running Cinebench. Score of 983 in Cinebench. We had a peak temperature on the package of 62 degrees Celsius. There's enough airflow in here to indicate that the 8600K is not gonna overheat, so let's now start the Ida64 stress test. We'll keep it at 100% CPU usage for, let's, let's go for a full 10 minutes and see where it is at that point. You can see that we're running at four gigahertz. You can also see that over here, 4.1 is what we're averaging on all cores. We've gone up to 4.2. Three, two, one. 10 minutes is up. It looks like the temperatures have steadied out. We peaked at 70 degrees Celsius on the package. Looks like we averaged around 67 to 68 degrees Celsius, and we had a max power draw of 70 watts on the package for the CPU. Everything ran at 4.1 gigahertz for nearly the entire test. So no slowdown whatsoever, no thermal limiting, no thermal throttling. The Gamax GT RGB thing doing its thing properly. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the new Intel stock cooler and see how this thing goes. Just gonna put a little, little doodad right there. We're gonna try to keep it even for next time. That looks like a decent pea-sized amount. I'm actually, I'm gonna put a poll, top right-hand corner. Do you think that the old stock cooler or the new one is gonna work better? Don't fast forward, don't guess, just answer what you want now, okay? Do you think thick boy or do you think Thin boy, gonna win. All right, this won't have RGB, so it's gonna be disappointing. But there we go, we've got a fan spinning. You can see that we're idling about 33. We've already hit 50 degrees from boot up. So that's not exactly confidence inspiring for what's about to go down. Let's go ahead and run. Hot dog, 70C already, and just continuing to climb. No thermal slowdown, we're still at 4.1 gigahertz. Everything's fine there. Okay, we peaked at 75C on the package, which is fine, that's fine. But that was like, about a minute of just running uh, Cinebench. <laughs> it's time for the real Mac Daddy test, the 10 minute Ida64 Extreme, maxing everything out. Now it's start time. We'll let this run for 10 minutes, we'll get back to you. I'm expecting not so great temperatures. Not so great temperatures, I'll let you know. Already at 70 degrees, holy crap, 72. There's 75, less than 30 seconds in. There's ADC at less than a minute in. The clocks are still at their boost though, we haven't dropped below 4.1. Five, four, three, two, one, and we're done with a peak of 88 degrees Celsius and never dip below 4.1 gigahertz, which is fairly good. But one of the things I did notice was that the highest temperature was still continuing 
to go up at the 10 minute mark, which means that uh, it looks like it was, it, we could probably get it to 90 if we ran it for a little bit more. But now that that test is done, let's move on to the star of the show. This one old wide boy from, uh, from a decade ago, from 2008. And while we can all complain about Intel and how they have basically changed their socket every other freaking year, one of the things that we can at least give them kudos for is how they've kept the pinout or the uh, the location of how you mount the CPU cooler is the exact same over the years. So I can nearly guarantee that this LGA 775 CPU freaking cooler will <laughs> you suck uh, will fit on the current system. Come on, wide boy. Get your butt out. That actually looks amazing for being a decade old. Look at how clean that is. Basically no dust, but we can see that there is indeed a copper core under here and copper has better thermal conductivity. So that means it can transfer heat from the CPU better to this inside here. And then with the aluminum fans having more surface area, I can nearly guarantee this thing is gonna be so much faster, uh, cooler rather than the current Intel stock cooler that they're increasing, which they've obviously cut due to cost because copper is definitely way more expensive than aluminum. That looks clean. Look at that. Look at that. That is a decade old. Look how clean and shiny that looks. Like the thermal base didn't hold up well. Yeah, so let's, let's do a direct comparison side by side. You can see the aluminum core here on this current one. You can see the copper core here. That should work better. And then you just, the size difference is tremendous. Intel has really, really kind of gone budget with their stock coolers. Let's go ahead and mount this wide boy. Let's go wide boy. Get your wide butt onto my CPU. Oh, that's not working. Epic fail. Yeah. Yeah. LGA 1151, don't disappoint me. Oh, it's just like sent millimeters off. You're ruining my day. You literally are hurting my life. Yeah. Oh, it's just like slightly off. Hopefully we can rectify this situation. Even with zip dyes, I'm rectifying this. I've come too far to lose this battle. That looks identical. Like as far as spacing. Just pulling the fan off so we can have better access and look see at everything. There we go. Look at that copper core. That is gorgeous. I think if I maybe bend it, it might reach. This is what you not do at home, kids. So I'm gonna bend it to hopefully allow it to like go in at an angle. Oops, I'm getting this test done. If I have to snap these off and zip tie it down, I'm doing this test. Oh, rip. Oh yeah, that's bent. Oh, you're closer. You're closer, that's for sure. It is so freaking close. I'm gonna call this a bust. Cutting portion of the pliers. Uh, Tank, can you help? I want you to hold it steady while I like crack it off. Just be careful. I don't want you to like get cut from the fans or fins. Ready? There it is. Ah, there's the plastic. Okay. Well, no, I need to do it four times. At this point, what's we've already lost. I'm not reusing this again. I don't need to use that system. That system's getting thrown away. There it is. Ah, gosh, dang it. my. <laughs> Oh, okay, it was like barely skin, so it's fine, it's fine. There we go, yes. Where are our zip ties, fam? Oh, here's some. All right, let me get the fan back on. Oh, <laughs> this is not going exceptionally according to plan, I'll tell you what. There we go, zip tie time. How am I gonna do this, actually? But like, I'll just do two on each. We're already super janky, so why not just <laughs> fully commit here? A little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of zip ties. Life's good. Okay, so it's still wiggling around, which means it's not exactly tightened. So let's go ahead and remove all of its freedom. This is taking way too long. This is not the journey I expected to go on today. Like I'm eating my words from earlier. I was like, they're the same thing. They're, they're slightly off, <laughs> millimeters off. Ruins everything. Okay. I mean, that's, that's firmly mounted by everything in my book. Let's go ahead and cut the excess off just so we don't have any difficulties. 
and then this excess should also be fine. Nothing's interfering with the fan. <laughs> Hopefully it boots. Hopefully I didn't screw anything up in the motherboard when I was, well, I guess let's see if it boots first before I turn up, put the backplate on. Yeah, working, fan working, everything's good. Whew, nerve wracking times, friends. I hope it's worth this. Now we have some uh, idle temperatures of 30 C. That was more stressful than I was hoping. Like if I had an extra one to two millimeters on that cooler, I wouldn't have had to snap off the plastic. But for the sake of the video, things must continue. Let's go ahead and run Cinebench. The temperature on the new cooler was 75 C on Cinebench. It honestly looks like we're doing worlds better. Holy crap. The temperature with the Gamax GT was 65. Holy crap. Holy crap. Wow, jeez. 66 degrees Celsius with the 10 year old stock cooler. That is one degree more than that Gamex. The Intel wide boy, one degree warmer than this. Intel, what are you doing? All right, now it's time for, for the stress test. Let's go 10 minutes. Let's see if my janky uh, mounting solution keeps it cool. But my friends, I, 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 oof, I'm excited here. This is, this is different than what I was, that's much better than I was anticipating. Like we're already below 40 C. Like with the previous one, we had to wait. Like by the time I loaded up Ida 64, I had to wait to get, to get it below 40 again. We'll give it 10 minutes. Uh, just, just for reference sake, we hit 88 degrees on the new stock cooler. We did over 90 when we activated the GPU. With the Gamax, we did 70 C, which is enough headroom uh, to also include a GPU. Let's let this run for 10 minutes and I will get back to you guys, but whoo, I'm excited. What was that? That was like a... <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Stop the test. 81C peak. What are you doing, Intel? Why are you giving us CPU coolers that are worse? It's a decade. Why have we gone back in cooling technology? You're trying to save money? Your processors cost more than ever. You're trying to uh, make things look more aesthetically pleasing. I mean, that copper and aluminum look pretty shiny to me after a decade in a church where nobody cleaned the PC. Your CPUs have gotten more efficient, but they're actually the same TDP as they were before. It's just that we have more cores and more gigahertz. So why? Why not just include the stock cooler from before? Yes, I get it. Copper's expensive. Yes, I get it. You like to cut costs, but holy crap. Like if I can go down to a PC junk shop and pick up a cooler that's 10 years old off of the shelf and zip tie it to my motherboard and get better performance than what you include on your on your new CPUs, you're doing something wrong. Like this pretty much proves the point for me. Intel is great about innovation, but they've kind of regressed. They're not moving forward. They're giving us things that are worse. I'm not happy with this result. Even though Wide Boy performed phenomenally, I pulled a janky motherboard out of a 10 year old computer. I got great thermal performance out of it. That was like, if I had this with the 8600K, not overclocked obviously, but on a B360 board, I would keep this installed. I wouldn't buy an aftermarket cooler. This however, Hitting 91C in five minutes when both the CPU and the graphics card are running? No thank you, no thank you. But this 81C after 10 minutes and it was stable. It was not continuing to increase. This thing was reaching its thermal limits and was still increasing in temperature on the CPU. This is basically definitive for me. Wide boy wins, wide boy wins. This is a soy boy cooler, Intel. Stop giving us soy boy stuff. Whew, that's gonna wrap up the test for today. Do you guys have any other like oddities that you want us to test out from like tech from years gone by? Like C apparently CPU cooler tech has actually uh, devolved 
in the recent years. Is there anything that you want us to check out? Let us know down in the comments down below. I do just wanna give a big thanks to Wootware for hooking us up with the system that is running right here. Everything that we use for this system, they helped us out with. Uh, so 1060, the P350X, gorgeous case, in case you didn't know. Absolutely lovely. So if you're in South Africa and you're looking to build a PC of your own, check them out, wootware.co.za. Link will be in the description for them. I'm not sure if they hold any wide boy Intel stock coolers, but you know what, go ahead and ask them. But I can't walk away from this video and not be frustrated with Intel. So I'm gonna end it there. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this test. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. And I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Cheers. You don't actively look for that kind of thing. You don't know what it means to be a noob. You suck. Let's go. Let's go. Down to Ponytown. Everybody knows the way, but everyone wears a crown. Down. Oh, down to Pony Pony Town. Pony Pony Town, Pony Town, Pony Town. Pony Pony Town, Pony Town, Pony Town. <laughs> You're too old for me. I know. Wait, other way around. <laughs> <laughs>